Hello, I hope you have been well. My name is Fiona. I'm a lawyer. I am in Kampala, Uganda. I practice with a law firm called Sassir and Company Advocates. And on this channel, we talk about matters of the law. Um, on this channel, we give general information. Don't take it as legal advice. Uh, you can use this information however you want. Now, today, in this uh, quick video, I want us to talk about caveats in property. What are caveats? Uh, who can lodge a caveat? What is the purpose of the caveat? And how do you vacate a caveat? So, let's get into it. Caveats are legal notices given to the Registrar of Titles, notifying him or her or their office that the caveata actually has a caveatable interest or an interest on that particular property. Now, what do caveats do? Caveats are, they, they record someone's interest that is not already recorded on their certificate of title. Because when you get a certificate of title, you will see who the owner is, but you will not necessarily see who else has an interest on that property. Now, who are the different types of people that legally have a caveatable interest? I'm quickly going to give you three. And then the fourth one is always a topic of discussion or depending on their circumstance, they also have a caveatable interest. Number one, a purchaser who has bought land from a vendor and they have a sales agreement, but they are about to um, initiate the process of transfer. So if you're very apprehensive, and this is very common, you find a vendor who sells one piece of property to like six different people. So now if you're a very wise purchaser, the moment you buy the land, you sign the agreement, you go and lodge a caveat because now you actually have an interest in that property. That's one category of people that can actually lodge a caveat. The second category of people is a spouse, especially in matrimonial property. If you're a husband or a wife and you're very apprehensive that maybe your spouse wants to do any transaction on the land that would prejudice you or undermine your interest, you can actually lodge a caveat on the land and um, the land office is obliged to first contact you before they can effect any transaction on that property. The third category is a beneficiary in an estate. If you're a child of a deceased and um, your father maybe didn't leave a will or they left a will, but maybe the executors of the will or administrators of the estate look like they want to play a game of ping pong with you and your interest, you have a right to register a caveat, a beneficiary's caveat on the title. What is the effect of the caveat when it is registered on the title? Um, if, for example, A goes to buy land from B, and when they conduct a search, they find that on the encumbrance page, this is where the caveats and other interests are registered, there is a caveat. If they want to go ahead to buy, uh, they register with someone, the caveata, and say, these papers have been lodged, we want to register them. Do you agree? Do you not agree? If you agree, then that transaction can happen. But the point is that no transaction can be conducted on that property without you being notified as a caveator. And it will help because now you'll be in the know. Otherwise, your interest may be prejudiced simply because you, you don't have a way of knowing. Um, if you are a bank or a money lender and you want to register a mortgage on a property or you want to lend someone money and they want to pledge that property as their collateral security, if you conduct a search, you will find a caveat. Now, in law, the order of registration gives the order of precedence. If there are already an existing caveat and you go ahead and you lend money on that property and register your mortgage, that means whatever happens, the caveat's interest um, is... is um, takes precedence over your own interest. And uh, how do you register a caveat? Um, you definitely will need to draft the caveat itself where you describe the land and then you have to support it with a statutory declaration. Uh, in some writings, you'll find that you need an affidavit 
essentially a statutory declaration and an affidavit they have the same effect but the proper term is a statutory declaration where you say i'm so and so i this is how i am interested in this kind of land if you are a purchaser you have to attach your sale agreement then you need to attach your passport photo um then you also have to attach your national id pay the requisite fees and lodge the documents at the land registry for registration um each time you register anything in the lands it is always good that you after you conduct a search to see whether it is actually on because you may actually think that you lodged a caveat but if they actually didn't register the caveat then you'll find that you actually don't have a caveat now um how do you for example if you're a purchaser you may have sold now your interest to a different person and you're no longer interested in the caveat or your that beneficiary or a spouse and you find oh you're that money lender and you no longer want it to you know stay on that property what do you do you lodge what we call a caveat withdraw uh, you you draft a caveat withdraw and uh, you also lodge the papers in the land registry and then they are uh, they will be able to vacate the caveat i hope that this uh, video was very beneficial to you uh, thank you for giving us your time Come back again we are going to be loading more of these these are for purposes of information because information is power and we believe that general information should generally be shared freely thank you so much see you